Let's build a website today with Google Sites. To build your Google Sites website, go to sites.google.com. You'll come to a page that looks something like this. The first thing we may want to do is to check out the templates. You can see a handful of templates along the top. To see more, click on Template Gallery. Let's check out the professor's template. Here's the home page or bio. There's another page for teaching, a writing page, interviews and media, as well as office hours. If you like this template, you could just start editing it. But in many cases, I feel like it's easier just to start with a blank template. If you click on the icon in the top left-hand corner, it'll take you back to the main Google Sites page. I'm going to delete the professor's page I just created. Then click on blank site. First, let's add a logo. I'll upload that from my computer. While we're here, why don't we add a favicon as well? If you're not sure what a favicon is, it's this little icon in the top corner of any browsing window. All right, we uploaded both of those. Let's now add a page title. Then up above the text, you can see what type of text it is. This is title text. You can change the font, font size, make it bold, italic, underline, add a link to it. I don't think I like a font that's this light. Let's see if we can change it. Within Lotto, we have a couple different options. Let's choose Lotto Black. I think that looks better. Now I want to add a subheading below my name. You can see it add the text to a section down below. Let's pull that up right below my name. Let's make this font a little bit larger. So I don't really like this alignment with my name in the center and then the text below it off the left hand side we could center the text down below that could work or if you drag either the sides of one of the text boxes it's going to adjust the text accordion what i could do here is change the alignment of my name to left aligned and i'll push it to the left of this text box and there i think that works now let's add a background image okay so the image doesn't show up all that well obviously my face is in the frame it's not awful but let's see if we change the header type if it'll look even better all right if we change it to cover it basically takes up the entire height of the screen I like that better. This video is sponsored by Porkbun.com, the best domain registrar according to USA Today and our top domain registrar in 2024. You can find out more about Porkbun in this video that you'll find in the description. For a dollar off the purchase of a new domain or off the transfer of your domain to Porkbun, use the link down below or enter the code the figco 24 at checkout. Let's add a section down below. This is gonna promote our YouTube course for beginners. Let's select an image for this. Okay, so it's not showing the entire image. Let's see if we drag this down, we can increase the height of the image. Something like that. Fill in the title, want to start on YouTube. With Channel Launch Roadmap, you'll choose your niche, set up your channel, come up with dozens of video ideas, and plan the launch of your YouTube channel. Now to actually sell the course, why don't we add a button that'll take someone to the sales page for this course. To insert a button, it asks you to give it a name as well as add the link for the button. So it added the button below this image. Let's drag it up to below the text describing the course. Something like that, but it's a little bit close to the text. Maybe if we add a spacer and push the button down, it'll look better. Maybe a little more space. It's not letting me change the size of the spacer. So let's add another one. You can see there, I duplicated it, adding another spacer. Now you can see at any point, if you wanna move things around, you can grab the button, let's say, and pull it down below the image. And if I wanted, I could even stretch it out so it takes up the entire width of the page. I'm not quite sure I like how that looks though. If you made a change and you don't like it, or if you did something by accident, you can always go up top and hit the back arrow to undo any changes you made. There we go. Let's just stick with that. And then down below, why don't we add a footer? So this is gonna show up at the bottom of every page of our website. Maybe here I can just add my name and then all of my social links. I'll add my Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest. And then I'll align to the left below my name. Now that we've finished the homepage, let's check out the themes and we can see how it changes the formatting. So we're currently using the simple theme. There's also Aristotle, Diplomat, Vision, Level, an impression. Within each of the themes, you can choose one of the pre-selected colors, select your own custom color, and change the font style. Now let's add another page to the website. I'll create a page listing my different YouTube channels. So I don't think I want a header like this on this page. I'm going to change it to title only. Then I'm going to insert a contact block for each one of my three YouTube channels. One, two, three. The first is the Figco. I'll write a little description. Then we have Greater Than Enough, my personal finance channel. Then lastly, we have Beginning of a Business, a YouTube channel to help people start a business. Then here along the left-hand side, instead of adding an image, I'm going to insert one of our YouTube videos. You can search for the YouTube video that you want to add, or I found them earlier and saved the links, so I'm just going to copy and paste the link in. And then the name of the channel, I'm going to make that a link sending someone to the channel page. So the Figco, done. Here's a video for greater than enough, and then adding a video for being of a business, and the link to the channel. There we go. I think the page looks good. And as you can see above, this page was added to the menu You'll see my YouTube channels along the top 
of the page. If I didn't want this page to show up in the menu for whatever reason, I can click on the three dots and then click on hide from navigation. And then the same thing, if you want to add a page that wasn't in the navigation to the navigation, click the three dots and click on show in navigation. Now let me show you something else you can do with the pages within Google Sites. First, I want to create a services page. Let's just imagine my business had two services, service one and service two. So I may describe them briefly on the services page that describes everything I do, but then I might actually want an individual page for each one of these services. So let me show you how I can do that and add it to the menu. Adding a page for service one, then a page for service two. So all of these pages right now would show up in the navigation. This isn't what I want it to look like, but if I drag service one over top of services, and let go, you can see that it adds it as a sub page under services. I'll do the same thing for service two. Now you can see there's a drop down next to services. If I mouse over it, you'll see service one and service two are listed. So in the main part of the menu, you have services. And if someone mouses over it, they could click on the services page or they could click on service one or service two if they want to go to either of those pages specifically. And then one other page I want to add is a contact me page or a work with me page. Let's add some text and then we could add a Google form. So the website is almost ready to publish. One thing I would do before publishing is make sure the website looks good on a computer, tablet, as well as a phone. You can do that by clicking on the icon that looks like a computer and a phone. To publish your website, click on publish in the top right hand corner. Here you can choose the Google Sites web address. So you have sites.google.com slash view slash whatever the name you give it. Let's call this JJ Thalen. Instead of using this long URL from Google Sites, down below you can see you can actually connect a custom domain, something not usually available for free website builders. Let me show you how to connect your own domain. Click on manage, then click on start setup. Enter the domain you'd like to use. I'll use our domain, thefigcotutorials.com for this tutorial video. It says the domain is not verified. Please verify your ownership. So click on verify your ownership in blue. So it takes us to Google Search Console with the URL already entered down below. And then I'm gonna click on continue. As we already knew, we need to verify the ownership. To do that, it wants you to copy this text record and add it to the DNS settings of wherever you purchase your domain. If you need a domain, we recommend purchasing your domain from Porkblunt. A .com domain costs $10.37 and you can get a dollar off the first year by using the link in the description. Your domain purchase includes who is privacy protection, an SSL certificate, DNS management, web and email hosting trials, and amazing customer service by phone or email 365 days a year. This domain we purchased from porkbun.com, so I'm gonna go there and enter this text record. Here I'll select text record, and then paste what we saw on the other screen, enter the answer field, and click on add. Down below you can see the text record was added successfully. I'll wait just a minute before I hit verify because it may take a few minutes for everything to update. Ownership verified. Okay, so for whatever reason this didn't update, I'm just gonna delete the URL and type it back in. And there we go. It already knows we verified this URL. I'll click on next. Now it wants us to go to where we purchased the domain, back to pork bun, and now add a CNAME record. We'll change it from text to CNAME, enter www, and then paste that as the answer and click on add. And down below, you can see the CNAME record has also been added. Again, I'll wait for just a minute or so here to make sure that the new information has been updated by pork bun. Assigning a domain and it's been successfully added. Now with the domain connected, let's publish the website. Up above, you see that we have the Google Sites URL, and then down below for custom domain, it says allow up to 48 hours for this site to also be viewable at thefigcodetutorials.com. Let's click on publish, and I think it's live. Here at the top with the link icon, if you click on it, it'll copy the published site's URL. We paste it, and it's not quite loading yet. I'm guessing it may take a day or two. One thing I realized I didn't do is actually add a name for the site. It still says untitled site. So let's just change this to JJ Thalen. If you click the arrow next to publish, you have the options to see publish settings, view changes and publish, view publish site and unpublish. By clicking on view publish site, it takes us to the Google sites URL and you can see the web page loads just fine. And then really quickly, we've seen some of this earlier on. Why don't I run you through everything within settings. So first we have the navigation, then we have the brand images, which we add at the very beginning, our logo and favicon, viewer tools, the custom domain, analytics, so you can connect Google Analytics if you wanna see who is viewing the page, and then we have an announcement banner. Why don't I show you how that works? Then I'll add a message, watch my latest YouTube video, and the button will say watch here. 
and then I'll add a link to one of my recent YouTube videos. Being this link is going to YouTube and taking someone off of my website, why don't I have it open in a new tab? And then down below for visibility, you can have it only show up on the homepage or on all pages of your website. Okay, it's been about an hour. Let's see if the custom domain is now working. So I'll click on copy publish site link, copy link, paste link, there we go, our website is now live on our custom domain. As you saw in the tutorial, Google Sites is a solid option if you're looking to build a website for free and also be able to connect a custom domain. If you need a domain or want to transfer a domain to Porkbun, to save a dollar off the first year, don't forget to use the code the FIGCO24 at checkout. If you want to see how Google Sites compares to the best free website builders, watch this video up above. Or if you want to see the best overall website builders in 2024, check out this video down below. And I hope to see you in another video. Bye-bye.